In the previous lessons, we learned how to animate a simple character. This technique is great for simple animations. But it also has drawbacks. It's not very comfortable to control the character's pose. Every time we have to select a particular part, and only then can it be moved. Moreover, we have to think about creating correct group structure. If our character is just a little bit more complex, then we'll have to create many nesting groups. And it gets hard to manipulate them. For animations of characters and other complex structures, you can use bones. With bones, it's very easy to create a skeleton like this and control a character. Now I'm going to show you how to create such a structure from scratch. Open the Character 2 folder. Here we have an image of a whole character and all its parts separated. First, let's import the whole image. That will be our reference. Next, add the separate parts. Now group everything together and scale to fit the working area. Now it's time to clean up the mess. Let's separate all the parts. For our convenience, let's make the image of the whole character semi-transparent. Layer transparency is defined by the amount parameter. Let's set its value to 0 0.5. Now let's put all the parts into place. Here goes the body, the head, next the legs, the hip, the thigh, and the foot. The second leg appeared to be above the body, but it's easy to fix. Just send it to the back. All the remaining parts are assembled in the same way. It's kind of fun, like a puzzle. And don't forget to save your work regularly. Done. We don't need the reference layer anymore, so it's better to hide it. Now we can add a skeleton layer. Let's put it inside of the group, above all the image layers. Expand the group, select its first layer, right-click it and choose New Layer, Other, Skeleton. So we have a skeleton layer created with one bone. Here it is. The green point is the bone origin. The brown one determines its angle and length. Let's create one more bone. Right click at any point of the existing bone and choose Create Child Bone. And there the second bone appears. It's subordinate to the first bone. Look, when I move the first one, the second one moves as well. But the second bone can move on its own. That's how the bone hierarchy works. So let's put the first bone into the right location. It will be responsible for the position of the whole character. The second bone is for the body. We put it here. Since arms and head should be subordinate to the body, We'll create their bones from the body bone. Right-click it and choose Create Child Bone. Now we create a bone for the lower part of the arm. And from that bone, create a child bone for the hand.
The legs should stay still if the body bends, so make them belong to the first bone. Next, create a bone for the ankle and for the foot. In the same way, create bones for the second leg. Now the skeleton is ready. Although just now it doesn't affect any character part and it moves on its own. What we need now is to link all the parts to the skeleton. To connect the body, select both the body layer and the skeleton. Click the body, press Control, and click the skeleton in the layers list. Next, left click the green point of the body layer. That way we indicate what exactly should be connected. Then right click at any handle of the bone and choose Link to Bone. Done. The body is linked now. Let's connect all the remaining parts in the same way. If you have linked some part to the wrong bone, just link it to another one. It will reconnect automatically. The character is ready. Let's try to move him. Note that when I'm dragging the tip of a bone, the bone is automatically stretching the image. That helps a lot in most cases. But sometimes the effect is not desirable. The head is an example. We might want to bend it, but not to stretch. No problem. For this very case, each bone has a blue point here. It allows us to change a bone angle without affecting its length, like this. If a layer is linked to a bone, that doesn't mean it should be controlled using the bone only. Nothing of the kind. We can still move it by itself. The only difference is that now it moves relatively to the bone that it has been linked to, so transformations of the bone and layer are composed together. Finally, one more important remark. All parts of our character are located inside the group we scaled down in the beginning, and the skeleton layer was placed inside of this group. It's crucial to do this since both the skeleton and the parts we are linking to it must share the same coordinate system. If we create a skeleton outside the group, the bones will have different coordinates compared to the objects. You might not notice this while linking, but when you try to change a bone position, nasty things are sure to happen. Let's save and close this file, and I'll show you an example of this. Let's assemble a part of our character, just a body, head, and arm. Suppose we decided to assemble the arm like this. Placed it here. Then grouped, moved, and also turned. As you understand, all the arm parts would be in the other coordinate system, because we have transformed their parent group. Let's try to attach everything to a skeleton. The body. head and arm, all connected. Now let's try to change the pose. As you can see, the head and body are fine, but the arms just go wild. That's because of the transformed group. If the group hadn't been transformed, then everything would be fine. It wouldn't cause any troubles. To fix the issue, we can get parts out of the group and realign them to the skeleton. But now we'll go another way. 
Let's suppose we don't need our character to bend his wrist and elbow joints. So one bone for the whole arm would be enough, and we can connect the whole group to it. Yes, you've got it right. The groups also could be connected to a skeleton in the same way as image layers. But I guess you already figured out that an image layer actually is also a group. Or to be more precise, a switch group. And the real image layer is located inside. But I digress. First, we have to disconnect the parts inside of this group from the skeleton. Select the part you need. Find the transformation parameter. Right-click it and choose Disconnect. Yes, this is the same way as we deleted parameter animation. Don't be surprised. Now let's link the group. Done. Well, that's it. In the next lesson, we'll try to create a walk cycle for our character.